Hello and welcome to Beast of Philosophs, the hairy beast, where we talk about everything hairy and extinct. This is episode one. In the latest issue of Nature, there are two competing articles describing two different skeletons belonging to the same group. Both of these skeletons are from the Tao Te Xian formation. This is Arbo Haramia Jenkinsi I and Megaconius Mammaliaformius. Both of these skeletons are described as belonging to the members of an order called the Heramaida, which you've probably never heard of. Here is a reconstruction of these two skeletons and what they may have looked like in life. Arba Haramera was probably arboreal, whereas Megaconius was probably terrestrial, running around on the ground. In the two papers, they describe a phylogeny, an evolutionary tree of where they position both of these fossils. In one paper, they position this fossil next to a group called the multituberculates. Now, you may have never heard of multituberculates, but they are the most successful mammal group that have ever existed. Unfortunately, they are extinct. They lived for about from the Triassic into the Eocene, and here is an example of one. So they lived even longer than the dinosaurs, and they are characterized by having lots of tiny cusps on their teeth, as well as a blade-like fourth premolar in their lower jaw. Now, in the other paper, they said that Megaconius was completely separate from all the other mammals, including monotremes, which include the platypus. Thus, Megaconius was a very primitive offshoot off the mammalian tree. Well, which one of these is correct? Well, luckily you have me, an expert in fossil mammals, and I am going to tell you which idea, which hypothesis I think there is stronger evidence for. But let's take a look. Megaconius has uh, lots of cusps on its teeth. These are the upper teeth from that skeleton, a nice SEM scan, and you can see lots and lots of little tubercles on these teeth. And in fact, in the lower teeth of Metaconius, you see that the premolar, this premolar down here, is enlarged with sort of a blade-like thing. This is very multituberculate-like. Um, and in fact, if we compare it to multituberculates from the Jurassic, it looks extremely similar to those types of groups. This is Seanconiodon, which is from the Jurassic, a little bit uh, younger. If we look at the postcrania, the skeleton of Metaconius, we see some other traits that are very multituberculate-like. These include a bone spur that comes off of the ankle bone right here, which is this bony spur that comes off of here. The coolest thing about these bonious spurs is that platypus also have a bonious spur off their ankle, which is poisonous. And uh, multituberculates from the Cretaceous period also have a bonious spur that comes off of their ankle. These were used uh, and are used by platypus today as a way of defense. Now, what led the authors of Metaconius paper to say that it was a primitive group not even related to platypus but way down on the evolutionary tree? Well, it had to do with a feature that is found here on this skull. They concluded that there is a ectotympanic, and the ectotympanic, which is part of the ear ossicle that holds the eardrum, was attached to the jaw. This is a very primitive trait found in very early mammals from the earlier parts of the Jurassic. Now, the interesting thing about this trait is that it is a fairly variable and is also sometimes found in some of the multituberculate groups, that when you have a tympanic attached to the back of the jaw. This is from a paper that's in developmental biology, which shows how a simple mutation of the Hox genes in the neurocrest cells can lead to a tympanic bone that's very much shaped like our primitive metaconius. This means that mutations could have impact in terms of reversing the condition to a more primitive state that you'd find in metaconius. So metaconius had sort of a primitive ear ossicle morphology. Now let's look at Arboharmiana. This is not as good of a skeleton. We're missing the skull, and so that makes it a little bit difficult. But we do have a lower jaw, and the lower jaw does not seem to show that there's any ossicles attached to the lower jaw. So it's truly a mammal. The teeth, though, are very primitive. In fact, if you look at the teeth down here, they're fairly bumpy, but not as bumpy as the ones that we saw before we talked about Metaconius. Now, the authors of this paper suggested that Arboharmania was closely related to multituberculates, even though its teeth I kind of lack that, and even though there's no real clear evidence of a bony spar in Arboharmania, which is kind of interesting. So, in comparison these two, I have to agree that 
the harmamid group is probably most closely related to multituberculates and may even be a subgroup within multituberculates evolving very early on during the Jurassic period. And that is my opinion. If you'd like to read more about this, you should definitely check out these papers and uh, read up on it and see if you do agree with my, my assessment of these two fossils.